So our 3D model is now looking pretty good. We now have our site, we have our walls, we have some slabs, and we have a roof. Now the settings of those need some work, but they're pretty much all in place, and so then they can be edited from there. We have doors. We used all the hinged doors so far, but we haven't placed some of the door, the sliding doors, and we haven't placed windows yet. So we'll stick with the doors first. So when we go to our door tool, apart from just the hinged door, we also have sliding doors. And just in the same way, the problem is that there's lots of different objects, but once we're in an object, we can't really switch between the objects. So we have to find the one that's doing the right thing first. So when we're looking for a sliding door, we need to know, well, what are we talking about? Are we talking about a door that's just one fixed panel and one sliding? This sliding door also gives us the ability to have two sliding panels, or three panels, two sliding, four panels, two sliding, four panels, three sliding, or four sliding panels. So these are the options, but then we can also see that we'd also have a sliding door with side lights. And that would be sliding lights on both sides, or a side light on one side, or a side light on the other side, and this is where it gets very complicated to know which one's which. It's in relationship to which one's moving. That's the important feature to note in this particular one. And we also have one with a side light and a transom. So we need to know which one we're choosing because again, once we're in it, it doesn't change very easily. I'm just going to use this two door method one for now, just to keep it simpler. We're going to press okay. Again, when we place a door, we should always place it with the sun facing outwards. So the exterior face, and then we can place, and then we can move it around. Now the scale is making it very hard to see what I'm doing. So let's just change this to under 50. And we'll turn off the true line weight temporarily. So when I do this again, let's make this bigger. Let's make this 1800 now. Place. So which one is the one that is opening? Which is the internal face? That's hard to know. And then if I move it this way, it's still very hard to know. Which, which side am I talking about? So let's just place it. I started by clicking outside, but now I'm going to click inside. Click. Let's go into this setting. And the pink node is the one that gives it away. So when we find the pink node, we could slide that open, and that's showing us that that is the sliding panel. What's the problem? That's on the wrong side. That's not how a door works. So let's do the same thing, but now we're going to pick up this setting, and this makes it much simpler. Click, delete. Let's replace it on the outside. But now, because we've already opened the door a bit, it makes it much easier to know which way we're trying to create this. So we know we need the opening one to be on the inside face, so that means we want to click on the outside face and then we have to decide do we want it to be on the left hand side or the right hand side so that makes it much easier to place our door and if we're not sure where that is supposed to be then the, of course the best way to do is to use our trace reference our existing floor plan shows trace reference or our drawings if we've got those drawings and here we see I've already got this represented. And so I can stretch it to the right size. Let's replicate this out here. And again here. It doesn't matter which door you use necessarily unless you're trying to model something specific based on the design. Now this one here isn't a door, this one here is a window, but I would suggest that maybe it's a great idea to put a door in here because it exits out onto the balcony. So in terms of what modeling what's there versus modeling what you'd like, I'll leave that up to you. I'm going to use window 22 now to show the windows. Let's go into the window tool. Window 22 is the simplest one. We'll do it the same way. I'm just going to place it. And I need to make sure I click on the outside face before I start. 
Now if it's not sitting in the right place, maybe we want to set it back further into the wall. When we go into our window tool, that's called our reveal to wall core. So I can type in a number here, and that's set that back 50 millimeters. That's what that particular tool means. Let's pick up the settings of that one, and now use that to place some more windows, but resizing them to the right size. Now what I wasn't doing was paying any attention or relationship to how tall these windows should be. I was just placing the window to get it right in plan, but if I go into the window setting, there's three different sizes I need to be aware of. The width of the window, the height of the window, and the height above the <coughs> ground. Now we can define this in a few different ways. This can be sill to story or sill to wall base. So depending on whether we're placing the wall based on the story height or based on the wall height, that will give us either the same number or a, a very different answer. If my wall and my story height are the same, wall base zero, story base zero, then that helps a lot.